atomic spectroscopy. All right, so before we talk about atomic spectroscopy, let's just talk about electromagnetic radiation in general. Now, it's categorized into various wavelength ranges. Radio waves are the very longest wavelengths, and so these are longer than 0.1 meters. Now, all of the rest of the ranges basically are shorter and shorter. So, for instance, microwaves are shorter wavelength than radio waves, but infrared has shorter wavelengths than microwaves. The visible range is, is quite narrow, and this is the part that we can see. And so those wavelengths are shorter than infrared, but not as short as ultraviolet rays. X-rays are even shorter still, and then finally gamma rays are the very shortest. So here's a figure showing that. So we can see radio waves have the longest wavelengths, okay? And microwaves, it, they start getting shorter. Infrared, shorter still. Visible light, shorter. And then finally up to our gamma rays, which have the very, very shortest wavelength. Also notice that visible light is a very small part of the spectrum. Even though we find it very, very interesting, it's only a very small part of the spectrum. So infrared, for instance, and ultraviolet, our eyes can't perceive that. So we can perceive visible light. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about visible light. And we can see that there are various wavelength ranges for the different colors of visible light. So violet has the shortest wavelengths out of the ones that we can see. Then the range is between 380 and 450 nanometers. Okay, so that's down here. And blue, a little bit longer. All right. Green, longer than that. Yellow, longer than that orange, and then finally red has the longest wavelengths, and then we start going into the infrared part of the spectrum. Now remember, the energy of a photon is related to its wavelength, so it's inversely related. So as the wavelengths get longer, the energy of the photon decreases, okay? Now with frequencies, as the frequency increases, the energy of the photon increases. So in the visible spectrum, red photons are the least energetic. They have the longest wavelengths. And violet photons are the most energetic. So they have the shortest wavelengths out of the ones that we can see. OK, so let's look at white light after we pass it through a slit and then bend it with a prism. So if we just turn on a light bulb, white light, we're going to narrow down a little beam, and it's going to come over here and pass through this prism. And as it's bent, we're going to see all of the colors, all the color components in that white light. And so we're going to observe all colors in the visible spectrum. Now, atomic spectroscopy involves replacing that white light with evacuated tubes containing atoms of various elements. And so in this case, we have replaced our white light with an evacuated tube filled with sodium atoms. And so these replace the white light bulb. Now, these sodium atoms are just hanging out in there, and we're going to zap them, OK? And as they relax, they're going to emit photons. OK, and so these emitted photons are going to pass through our slit, and then they're going to be bent by the prism, and we're going to see two lines, so two very specific lines in this spectrum. Now, this is only part of the visible spectrum for sodium, but we see our two yellow lines. And so that is called a line spectrum. And so the full visible line spectrum for sodium is here. OK, so it's hard to see that these are two separate lines, but these are the two yellow lines that we just saw previously. But this is the entire line spectrum for sodium. So what does that mean? Now, when you excite atoms, as they relax, they're going to ra radiate energy. So they're going to give off photons. Now, this energy is not over a continuous range. So the white light bulb 
gives us a continuous range of colors. When excited atoms emit energy, it's only at discrete quantized energies, so only at certain wavelengths. Okay, and so those photons. So we're going to see photons emitted with only certain wavelengths. And the spectra that we just saw, the spectrum in that case, that sodium spectrum, is called a line spectrum. Okay, so there are two types of atomic spectra. Okay, the first one is called an emission spectrum. And this is where light of specific wavelengths is emitted as photons by the atoms as they relax. Okay, so we've excited them and now they're emitting only certain wavelengths of light. Now an absorption spectrum is exactly the opposite. So we shine white light on this collection of atoms and light of just the right wavelength. So the wavelength that is just perfect and is actually, actually corresponds to what is emitted, that's absorbed by the atoms. So in the absorption spectrum, only light with just the right wavelength is absorbed by the atoms. So for instance, if a certain wavelength is emitted by the atoms in an emission spectrum, that's the same wavelength that's going to be absorbed by the atom if we shine white light on these atoms. Okay, so here are the two types of line spectra for hydrogen. So here's the emission spectrum. This is We excite them, and as they relax, they emit photons of various wavelengths, okay? Now here's the opposite situation where we shine white light on our hydrogen atoms, and they absorb only those wavelengths that were emitted, okay? So this is the opposite. You can see they're mirror images of each other. Okay, so these wavelengths were absorbed by the hydrogen atom. Everything else passes through. Okay, so here are a few more line spectra as examples. All right, so sodium, hydrogen, calcium, magnesium, and neon. So those are just a few examples, but every element has a line spectrum and they're all different. Okay, so the, the wavelengths of the lines, the intensities, the numbers of lines, those are all going to be different, and those are a signature for each individual element. Okay? So again, so these lines in the line spectrum correspond to a, a different emitted or absorbed energy. Okay? So light is going to be emitted or absorbed as, a, as photons, and we're going to see that this causes a transition between two energy states. So this is the change in energy of the atom. It either goes from a higher energy state to a lower energy state in emission, or it goes from a lower to a higher when it absorbs energy. So this change in energy can be positive or negative, but it's always exactly equal to, aside from sine, the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted. And we can relate the energy of the photon to either its wavelength or its frequency, okay? And so as I already mentioned, the numbers, the positions, and the relative intensities or brightness of the lines are a signature for each individual element. And so each kind of element has a different line spectrum.